Hey guys, Tommy here. Uh, coming to you from Split Croatia. I'm still here, it's my last day. Uh, here's a closer shot of the main beach. It's quite a busy beach, but the water's really nice, it's relaxing. So I spent the past few days just swimming like every day. Uh, again, flying out tomorrow. So this video is on cryptocurrency security. Uh, and I'm gonna go over, this has been in demand from a couple different people, so I wanna get this out to you guys. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. So for cryptocurrency security, the number one thing you can do is get your money off exchanges. Uh, this would seem like a no brainer, but a lot of people leave their money on exchanges, I think for convenience, um, or they're intimidated or worried about creating their own wallet. And so hopefully this video helps you with that, uh, shows you an effective way to do it. It's not that hard. Um, so that's rule number one. And that's half of cryptocurrency security right there. Second thing is you want to use two-factor authentication, not two-factor authentication. <laughs> uh, this, uh, basically what it does is when you log into your email address or an exchange, it's also going to send you a text message or a code in an authenticator which you put in. The result is if someone has your email password, they're not going to be able to get access to your account because they'd also need your phone. So this is a really smart thing to do for your exchange accounts especially uh, and your email address. And I will attest to that. Um, about three and a half years ago, I signed up for an exchange and I was a newbie, cryptocurrency at the time. And I used the same name, the same email, the same login and password for the exchange as I used for my email. And I didn't have two-factor authentication. Uh, and I think the exchange was a scammy exchange. And so they logged into your email and tried to access any other exchanges with the same information. And uh, I lost about two Bitcoins that way back in the day. So. Two-factor authentication is important. You guys need to do it, as well as these other security things too, as we'll go into. It's just good to be prudent about this stuff. You'll feel better. It's worth the investment to learn how to do this and do this. Uh, again, really not that hard. And I have like a little sheet, by the way. I'm just trying to hit on everything because I feel like this is pretty important. Okay, so next, uh, next, how do we do the actual security and transactions with cryptocurrency? What's a really good, safe way to do that? Well, the way I like to do it is I actually like to have different laptops for each of my major cryptocurrencies. And that might seem like an overkill, but I don't think it is. And I think it's a worthwhile thing to do. You can get laptops pretty cheap for like $200. Uh, it doesn't have to be the, the fanciest laptop, uh, just something typically small and that works well. Uh, for each of the cryptocurrencies I use, I'm using a different password as well. They're, I'm never repeating the same password. This is another really important part of cryptocurrency security uh, and I'll tell you how to make that password like a good way to make a password it's not random letters and numbers I don't think that's a good idea I think the best kind of password is uh, a string of words like I saw an example of it before for instance like horse eats battery water just like a, a weird string of words but that you can remember and that's also really hard for for uh, a program to crack especially if it's at least six six words in that string. So that's how I like to create passwords. And here's a really important part, is you should only type that password in the computer, the dedicated laptop you have for that cryptocurrency. Uh, you should never type that password into your main, uh, you know, hot laptop or, or computer that you use day to day, because if you have a keylogger, they could track that. So uh, only type it into this dedicated laptop. Let's talk a little bit more about that too. So once again, this laptop, this dedicated laptop for the cryptocurrency would only be used for that cryptocurrency and nothing else. Uh, and you should have done nothing with the laptop besides download the wallet for the cryptocurrency. Uh, some wallets can be, uh, cryptocurrencies kind of vary in their abilities. Some of them you're able to do offline transactions and some of them you're not. If you're able to do offline transactions, that's the best way to be secure with it. Uh, and in doing that, you should, if you can never connect that laptop to the internet, that's the way to go. Um, again, this is, this is not possible for all cryptocurrencies. I think it's pretty strong security if you have that laptop. And again, the only thing you use that laptop for is for that cryptocurrency. Uh, and you should have a VPN with every laptop that you use. And I think it's a good idea to use a VPN just for your main computer too. A VPN essentially, rather than connecting to your ISP who's sending your information out, you're connecting to a private server. So like for instance, my computer would connect to a computer in Germany 
and then that computer in Germany is connecting to everywhere that I want to connect to. So what this does is if someone's snooping on in your traffic, uh, they're only going to see you transmitting data back and forth between the computer in Germany and then that computer in Germany is doing everything for you. So I think that's another good security practice. Just use a VPN for everything. You should use it for all your laptops, uh, cryptocurrency related. So if you can do offline transactions, that's great. Uh, download a wallet for that cryptocurrency, do offline transactions. You can broadcast the transaction and put it on a thumb drive and you can get thumb drives for a couple bucks these days and then take that thumb drive and then you can plug it into your hot computer and broadcast that transaction. If you really wanna be safe, you use a different brand new thumb drive every time you broadcast a transaction. That'll kinda of keep you in check from not doing too many transactions either. Uh, you know, you, I don't think it's a good idea to constantly be going back and forth cryptocurrencies, especially for your long-term holdings, obviously. So uh, that would be a really safe way to do it. Again, if anything, uh, if you have that laptop connected to the internet, definitely have it on a VPN. And again, don't type that laptop, that password in anywhere except for that dedicated laptop for that cryptocurrency. Um, yeah, so that's basically how transacting works with it. Uh, the other thing I want to talk to you about is how do you back it up, right? So I actually don't like backing up the private keys, the, the string of letters and numbers. Uh, what I like to back up are the wallet files and the password you create that encrypts it. So the way to do that, let me see if I can switch hands. Uh, okay. So the way to do that is you'll make a lot of backups of the wallet file, uh, like a, a wallet.dat or for Ethereum, it starts with UTC. You can make a lot of backups of that. Uh, you can send it all over the place, email it to yourself, uh, put, it on, put it on some thumb drives, put it in a shoebox, uh, and actually you'll also do that for the written password. Well, you should put them in different places. So anyway, the wallet file, you can email to yourself, put it in a Dropbox, uh, you know, uh, just store it in various places, your computer, store it on external hard drive, store it somewhere that if there was an earthquake, you could also access it somewhere else. Um, so you want to make a lot of backups of the wallet file and then you also want to make a lot of backups of the password. So the password is again like the horse seats battery water like that string of letters and you can you can you, what you want to do is write down that password on a piece of paper and write it down on numerous pieces of paper and also store that in three or four places. So again like a shoebox or mail one to your parents house, uh, put one in your safe. So, and again, people won't know what that password is for, only you know what wallet file it associates with. Uh, I think that's a pretty good way to do it. I would say you never again want to put that password somewhere electronically uh, or type it in again uh, on your main computer. The only place you type in that password is the dedicated laptop for that cryptocurrency. So I think these are pretty good uh, cryptocurrency security standards. You know, if you're dealing with amounts of, uh, you know, over 100 million or something absurd, then you definitely want to do everything offline as much as possible. But for most people, this is pretty strong security, I'd say. Uh, let me see if there's anything else I want to talk to you guys about. So we talked about backing up. Again, backups are really important, you know? Make several backups of your wallet file and your written password. So you're gonna physically write down your password, the string of letters in several different places and that you know you can access. You know where you've put those passwords, basically. And try to commit it to memory, too. And that's the beauty of a string of words. They're usually not that hard to remember, especially for a major wallet that's storing a lot of your assets. It's probably a good idea. Uh, again, offline transactions, if at all possible. Uh, if not, use the dedicated laptop with a VPN. Again, it just depends on the cryptocurrency. Offline transactions aren't possible for all of them. Uh, Yep, I think that we hit it there. So uh, hopefully this is helpful for you guys, gives you a good idea how to do it. This is how I like to do my security. Uh, I know there's uh, also hardware wallets and whatnot, but this is my preferred route of doing it. So, all right, hopefully you guys like the video. Give it a thumbs up if you do. Thumbs up, there we go. Uh, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you guys in the next one.